Welcome, Highbury and friends. If this is your first time visiting Highbury Congregational Church Cheltenham YouTube channel, and if you like what you see, please subscribe and uh, share to your social media platforms. It will help to spread our reach. We begin by reading from Galatians chapter 6, Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 to 10. Make no mistake about this. God is not to be fooled. Everyone reaps what they sow. If they sow in the field of their unspiritual nature, they will reap from it a harvest of corruption. But if they sow in the field of the Spirit, they will reap from it a harvest of eternal life. Let us never tire of doing good. For if we do not slacken our efforts, we shall in due time reap our harvest. Therefore, as opportunity offers, let us work for the good of all, especially members of the household of faith. Paul's words are in the context of, of what he says in chapter 5. For him, there are two ways of living. There's the life in the flesh and life in the spirit. And the flesh isn't about physical, the physical or the, the, the bodily being bad. The flesh is a way of life uh, that is not um, guided by the spirit. I often like to think of it as the way of life that is not love. So if you look at the the fruit of the flesh or the results of the unspiritual nature or the unspiritual way of living, it's marked by selfishness, by not love. Whereas the fruit of the spirit or the harvest of the spirit is love. Love. And you say, oh, hang on a minute. Is, aren't there uh, quite a few fruits of the spirit? Well, actually, it's fruit of the spirit, a bit like an orange. And then it has the, the segments inside. So the fruit of the spirit is love. And then all the other things that we uh, hear about, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, fidelity, gentleness, and self-control. All of these things are part of what it is to live in the way of love. So to, to follow the way of the spirit is to live in love. And so when Paul talks about uh, sowing in the field. He takes this image, imagery of the farmer or, or the gardener. You plant the seeds and whatever seeds you plant, you will harvest uh, the fruit of that. So if it's the unspiritual or the fleshly way, you will reap a harvest of selfishness, of not love, and it will be death dealing and rather than life giving. If you sow seeds of love, live according to the way of the Spirit, then you'll have a harvest of, of love for God and for others. But let's face it, the whole business of tending a garden or a field is hard work. Let us never tire of doing good, for if we do not slacken our efforts, we shall in due time reap our harvest. Uh, in the, I'm an amateur gardener, uh, but I enjoy doing it. We planted seeds, things are beginning to grow. Some of it's at the stage where I'm not exactly sure, is that a lettuce or is that a weed? I mistook a sunflower for a bean plant. Um, and then when I received beans on my doorstep, thank you, Mary, um, when I was putting them out last night, one of the stems broke, uh, not, didn't snap, but it just, it bent over. And so we tenderly put it up with a, uh, with a little bit of uh, bamboo and this morning it's flourishing. So it still has its source of life. To be a gardener is to tend, to tend and to wait and to learn what plants look like and how they're looked after. It's fighting with foxes and slugs and blights. Don't grow weary in sowing according to the, the love of God, according to the Holy Spirit and his ways of love. I want to read to you a little poem. You can tell that I'm really into to Wendell Berry, uh, The Peace of Wild Things. I've just been letting letting these poems sink in. And, and there's a poem 
that I came across that uh, he wrote uh, called Ripening. And I think that he's writing about a couple, perhaps he and his partner. Um, but then as the poem unfolds, uh, there's this imagery of uh, ripening and of harvest that comes in and the mention of prayer. And perhaps uh, Barry is suggesting that uh, in the world, in our closest relationships, uh, we learn how to pray and we meet uh, God in the world and in our experiences. So how are we sowing? What kind of ripening and harvest are we looking for? The longer we are together, the larger death grows around us. How many we know by now who are dead? We who were young now count the cost of having been. And yet, as we know the dead, we grow familiar with the world. We who were young and loved each other ignorantly now come to know each other in love, married by what we have done as much as by what we intend. Our hair turns white with our ripening, as though to fly away in some coming wind, bearing the seed of what we know. It was bitter to learn that we come to death as we come to love, bitter to face the just and solving welcome that death prepares. But that is bitter only to the ignorant who pray it will not happen. Having come the bitter way to better prayer, we have the sweetness of ripening. How sweet to know you by the signs of this world. And so as you sow the seeds of love in your life today, uh, with the easing of lockdown and whatever that means for you, let's come to God in prayer. Lord, the weariness, weariness with lockdown with the uncertainty of what lies ahead of us. It's into the depth of our bones. We are tired and we long for things to be as they were and we know that is not possible. So we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would meet us in this time of uncertainty, of not knowing, and help us to continue to be faithful in sowing the seeds of love, to be spirit-filled, spirit-led. We pray that you would reveal yourself to us in our closest relationships. And as we tend those relationships, may we encourage one another to live in the way of love. Holy Spirit, come. We ask these things in your name. Amen. And together we pray, our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So, have a wonderful day, be led by the Spirit.